are almost entirely devoted to a report from my TC chair, Jason, who reviewed the progress of the Summer Flounder Recreational Working Group that has been meeting uh, in an effort to assist this board do its business. The rest of that meeting in August was focused on recreational fishing issues, especially on NEMAP and on MRIP. Now, we're about to receive shortly another report from Jason on further progress of that group uh, that's headed up by David Simpson. And also, uh, he'll be giving us technical committee requests. So please, I ask all board members to try to remember what you said and what was discussed at that meeting in August so we don't have the same discussion, so we don't go over the same ground. That wouldn't be very productive. Uh, as a reminder, we do have, uh, well, we did have another board meeting about three weeks ago. Not all board members were there, but certainly the state directors were there. We had it in conjunction with the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, with many board members, of course, having dual roles, being council members as well as board members. That meeting was in Philadelphia when we adopted the commercial quotas and the recreational harvest limits for 2014. And as a reminder to this board, uh, we agreed to drop the fluke recreational harvest limit from 7.63 million pounds to 7.01 million pounds. I believe I've got that right, Jessica. About a one half million pound decrease for 2014. So bear that in mind. Bear in mind the fact that we have that half a million pound decrease in that recreational harvest limit. When we discuss agenda items number four and number five, it's very relevant. All the details regarding what was done at that board meeting uh, three weeks ago in Philadelphia, they have been provided in uh, ASMFC news release, and I hope that everyone has, a, had a, has had a chance to look at it to remind yourself uh, the numbers with which we'll be dealing uh, in 2014, specific for the uh, recreational fishery, because again, it's very relevant to today's agenda. All right, public comment. Does anyone in the audience wish to raise an important point uh, or an issue regarding items that are not on today's agenda? All right, I see no hands up. Therefore, we'll go on to the next agenda item, which is number four, and that is the Summer Flounder Recreational Fishery Working Group Progress Report. And what I'll do now is turn to David Simpson, uh, who's chair of that particular group, and ask you, David, if you're prepared to give us uh, uh, well, some introductory material regarding what you did, why you did it, and what you've got. Okay, thanks, uh, Dr. Pierce. I am prepared because I have Tony and I have Jason <laughs> and Kirby and others. Um, yeah, the, the working group um, has met a couple times by conference call. Um, we asked the technical committee to explore the possibility of some technical approaches to this issue. Are there, um, uh, you know, purely technical scientific approaches that could objectively uh, tell us what um, um, changes to management could bring about greater equity in, um, in um, access to, I'm trying not to use the word allocation, I'm struggling not to use the word allocation, but there it was. Um, equitable ways to share in the resource and, and be responsive as the abundance and distribution of that stock changes. So I think it would be most efficient just to turn it over today now and, and have him go through what the technical committee has uh, um, been able to accomplish to this point. All right. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, I'll turn to Kirby first and ask Kirby if you've got anything to uh, add, Kirby, before we go to Jason for his report. Okay. In that case, uh, Jason, if you will, uh, give us an update on the progress of uh, the working group and also, of course, the technical committee uh, work that's been done to date. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Jason McNamee, I work for the Rhode Island Division of Fish and Wildlife. Um, I put together just a few slides, just so it was easier to have something to look up at when you're kind of recapping uh, some of the meetings that we've had, uh, and, and there's been a lot of a lot of action, uh, um, and it's gotten a little a little complicated to, to keep track of, but uh, tried to put together a little something here. So um, since the last board meeting, uh, the technical committee and its uh, subcommittees have met. Um, we've had a few few meetings since the last board meeting. I'm not counting the joint meeting. I was thinking about the one prior to that. Um, there was a meeting to discuss the Science and Statistics Committee and the Monitoring Committee recommendations for 2014 and, and beyond, in some cases, uh, management. And then there were also two additional meetings to discuss the uh, summer flounder recreational items that uh, Mr. Simpson just uh, talked a little bit about. So we met uh, on September 19th. Uh, this meeting had uh, two goals. The first was to uh, review the recommendations of the SSC and the monitoring committee for summer, summer flounder scup black sea bass. Just really briefly, uh, the monitoring committee did not recommend adding any additional management uncertainty to any of the, these three species for summer flounder and scup, it was felt that um, you know both have good stock status and that management was working well in each case. For black sea bass, um, they did not end up adding any management uncertainty onto the uh, onto the overall um, uh, quota. But what they did advise was uh, you know careful consideration when setting rec measures for black sea bass. So when we get into that recreational specification setting, to be really cognizant of um, the, the difficulties that we've had in, in the past trying to um, curtail harvest in what is a, a fishery that, uh, by all other measures, has um, you know rebounded to pretty significant levels and is causing difficulties in the recreational fishery. There was also an additional piece that we looked into, and that is um, in 2013, I believe, Wave 1 was open in federal waters, and um, that caused some difficulties management-wise for a number of states, but uh, in particular, the, the uh, technical committee, as well as the monitoring committee, wanted to note that there is no coverage of that fishery uh, as far as monitoring and, and keeping track of the harvest that's occurring, other than in the federally permitted party and charter boats, we had VTR information. So what we did was we got a hold of that information and, and calculated uh, that and basically viewed that as a, a minimal harvest estimate for that wave in lieu of any other information. So um, we have that calculation and, and uh, we just wanted to, to make the recommendation that this be considered at least a minimum harvest estimate for that wave. And in fact, there was not um, zero harvest in, in that wave as it would you know, come across otherwise uh, due the, to the lack of coverage. Um, so the technical committee reviewed the monitoring committee recommendations. It's sort of like the same people, um, mostly. <laughs> so um, it's, it's not far-fetched that they would uh, review and, and think favorably of their own recommendations. But um, they uh, they reviewed the recommendations, didn't offer any additional advice with the a couple of uh, additional members that are on the technical committee. Um, so I think you all have seen that and, and have considered that information. At that meeting, though, the TC also reviewed two models that were brought forward. Uh, and these were, at this point, focused on summer flounder. Um, there was uh, one called a model to evaluate recreational management measures. This was done by uh, Dr. John Ward. And then there was also um, a project called Summer Flounder Management Strategy Evaluation that was uh, done by the PMAFS group. That's the Partnership for Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Science. Uh, Mike Wilberg was a primary on that, John Wiedemann uh, as well uh, as others. So the the TC did their initial review of those two models at the September 19th meeting. Okay, on October 16th, the technical committee reconvened uh, and they got a little more information on these models and, and developed uh, some further advice uh, for the board. 
on these two projects. So uh, the following couple of slides are going to be, I'll give a brief um, introduction of the model and then um, give you the kind of bullets of the uh, technical committee advice uh, on those models. So the first was uh, the one called a model to evaluate recreational management measures using MREP data. This is the one done by uh, John, Dr. John Ward. Uh, the model allows for evaluation of rec management measures for the upcoming year by predicting the landings that are likely to occur across all length categories using a logistic regression. So it's just a modeling technique using existing information and develops a, a suite of uh, logistic regressions on that uh, information. Uh, he also did a second analysis and that was to estimate uh, the potential total number of fish landed and caught for a set of management regula uh, regulations in known conditions in a specific fishery. So here he tested that same information but looking at different suites of uh, management measures that have uh, or could occur. Um, so the model can then be used to predict proportional and directional effects of landings in relation to recreational regulatory changes. And it also, one of the neat things about this model is it looks at a lot of covariates that we have not traditionally looked at. Um, one in particular that kind of sticks out in my mind is um, there's this omega-3 fatty acid index and um, it has to do, uh, I, I'm not going to do it justice, but it's an index that's developed that has to do with people's um, understanding of omega-3 fatty acids and their health benefits and the, the incentive that that gives them to consume more fish. So that's the kind of uh, different sort of information that's in John Ward's model that we have not uh, traditionally looked at. Uh, so it was interesting. Okay, so the TC comments on this model. Um, we initially expressed interest in the results, uh, specifically in its capability to predict changes in harvest and incorporate uh, these extra fisheries uh, variables in a quantitative manner. There were concerns regarding a lack of realism in the model's outputs, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but some of the TC members looked in particular at the information for their state and said this um, isn't making sense, you're lowering a minimum size and yet your estimate has harvest going down and that's not um, possible. So stuff like that, um, you know, kind of raised some red flags to some of the technical committee members. Um, There's also questions about some of the data sources and the input variables. Um, in particular, you know, it, it heavily relies on uh, MRIP data and all of the caveats that uh, that go along with that um, are exist in this modeling framework. Um, there has been additional consultation uh, with John Ward, but at this point, um, those questions are still there for the technical committee. They, they haven't felt that their um, concerns have been addressed. Um, so these concerns in conjunction with the estimated timetables for conducting sensitivity runs um, led the technical committee to conclude that this model was not going to be useful um, at least at this point for recreational specification setting for summer flounder in 2014. Now we've had a subsequent follow-up to this meeting where we again sat down with John Ward so he is working in a shorter time frame than is indicated uh, on the slide here. He's going to make some corrections or not corrections but uh, modifications to his model and he's going to um, bring that back forward and we're going to look at it again and, and I think um, during this last call um, which was you know awkward at times but um, I think we finally got the point that we are trying to make about the discard estimates and, and that was one of the concerns that we had and how they were being factored into the model uh, we think we got that point across. Whether they can be corrected, I, I guess, is um, something we'll have to just see. But um, So there's like a smaller subcommittee that's continuing to work with John Ward to see if we can, um, you know, get this, get some purchase with this model and, and uh, get it to, to operate and get the technical committee comfortable with it. Okay, so um, Summer Flounder Management Strategy Evaluation. This model tests the effects of current and alternative regulatory and management options in the summer flounder recreational fishery 
uh, using management strategy evaluation. That's the, the technique that's used. Um, the simulation model was developed to evaluate the effectiveness of current and alternative me uh, methods for setting annual regulations. And the goal here is to see if they can achieve um, harvests without exceeding their limits. And then it also evaluates the effects of different regulations on the summer funder population and recreational fishery. So this one's a, a bit more uh, of a comprehensive model, uses stock assessment um, inputs and, and things like that. Um, in it. Uh, the outputs are split between a northern and southern region. Uh, they include harvest estimates, discard estimates, proportion of females harvested, and the probability of exceeding um, the ACL. So that's one of the nice things about this model and really the focus of it at the time when they uh, developed this project was um, they were under a, a sort of preliminary understanding of what accountability measures were going to look like in the future and they developed this model to be able to kind of run these different scenarios out over time and then look at the proportions of times that you exceed the ACL um, under a given regulatory uh, scenario. So sort of interesting uh, in that way. Um, so the management scenario can be put into the model and run and the outputs on the above metrics can be reviewed with this model. And the model was developed, um, again, prior to the changes to accountability measures that are uh, pretty, pretty new. Uh, the technical committee comments. Um, so we express interest in this analysis, specifically its ability to predict management success with uh, available tools, bag limits, seasons, things like that. Uh, the technical committee requested uh, that the PMAFs group explore model sensitivity uh, to non-compliance with size limits and possession limits. So the way the, the model currently exists is there's a knife edge uh, function in if you set a minimum size you get complete 100 percent compliance below that minimum size and that they're being discarded and uh, they're only harvesting things above that minimum size. So uh, this is a, another situation of realism where the technical committee said well you know Maybe it should be a little bit of a smoother function uh, than a, a knife edge. And uh, so they're going to um, potentially work on that. Um, Mike Wilberg said that he, they could work on this. Um, however, the timetable table to complete the additional analysis was, was a ways off. So it wasn't useful for the current um, specification setting process. And, uh, y you know, I think it would also um, need a, a funding source to be identified to be able to uh, continue on with that. Um, the model could be used to set consistent measures within a region and then test uh, variations on those measures to meet um, any goals that you wanted to set. Uh, for instance, you know, if you set, uh, we don't want to exceed the ACL more than 10% of the time in the next 10 years, you could, you could do that. You could test different scenarios to try and meet that goal. So this model could be used to investigate regional allocations uh, that provide equal discard proportions uh, and potential for management success. So it, it could be useful in that regard. Could serve as a starting point to examine allocations needed in each region to meet management goals, including um, equitable retention rates. Uh, and the, the timetable to complete additional analyses was approximately one month for some of the smaller items that we had requested, but that one month wouldn't start until January, um, just given the uh, time constraints of the, the researchers. So uh, last slide. Uh, moving forward, um, based on subsequent conference calls with the Summer Flounder Working Group, uh, a subcommittee will continue to work with Dr. John Ward as he modifies his model and addresses some of the technical committee concerns. We've already had uh, one follow-up and we've planned uh, a second one. Uh, the technical committee will move forward with the normal process for rec setting, um, you know, this year, regardless of the, the progress with the model. Um, you know, I, I don't think we ever intended to completely uh, shift tracks at this point. It would have been a parallel process, but, um, but I think the best case scenario for this year is if we get the model tweaked enough and get the technical committee comfortable enough, we could run it in parallel and do a comparison. Uh, but at this point, I think we're kind of putting our eggs in our, our current ad hoc uh, rec specification setting process. 
Um, and then the status of the PMAPS model is unclear. Um, work can be continued, but um, it, it was at least my understanding from our meeting with Mike that uh, some funding would be needed. Um, and in either case, it wouldn't be uh, ready for 2014. So that's uh, an update for me. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions that anyone might have. A few questions for Jason? Jason, what exactly was the black sea bass harvest in wave one? And what was the mean size? And um, I wasn't at the, uh, I didn't listen in on the SSC discussion of this, but what, it, what, it, what was their take on the uh, characterization of the wave one fishery as far as increasing scientific uncertainty? Yep, a good question. I can't give you a number. I can give you a proportion, though. Um, what, what I remember is, um, we ran the numbers and it was about 5% of the recreational um, harvest limit is what we calculated. Uh, but again, it was based on, um, you know, VTR data. So this was uh, self-reported federal, federally permitted party and charter vessels. So um, not huge, but not insignificant either. Um, mean size, I don't know off the top of my head. I could um, easily look that up, but I just have to go back and, and look at my notes. Pete? So as a follow-up, Mr. Chairman, is, I mean, we were seeing all the newspaper articles and all the reports. Uh, these weren't small fish. These weren't the typical pound, pound and a half fish. They were much, much larger. And um, given the problems with the tiered four black sea bass stock assessment and the uh, the transition from females to males and large at older ages, I thought that the SSC would have a significant problem with the characterization of the fishery and adding to the scientific uncertainty. I think, um, I don't know, I hate to say it, I, I think it was taken, the whole issue was taken rather casually. Any other questions? All right, I, uh, I, see, I see none. Uh, so Jason has indicated that uh, the, TA, the TC would like to proceed and has to proceed with the same ad hoc approach that it has used in previous years to assist us decide the recreational measures we will select in 2014. Uh, the models uh, are being developed. Uh, progress apparently has been made. Uh, there's some reason to be optimistic, at least for one of those models, but they're not yet ready for prime time, not, not ready to be used in 2014. So I think that's necessary for the board to have that understanding that we will uh, follow along with that same approach because there really is no other alternative. Uh, unless someone else on the board uh, disagrees and I, and I look to you to see if you do have a different uh, different point of view. Okay, uh, David. Yeah, I'll just comment briefly, and then Tony probably um, has a comment too. I think, you know, w what the TC is trying to do is is a pretty significant challenge. Trying to um, take a technical approach to such a dynamic issue, and I guess the question for you know the the work the challenge ahead for the work group and ultimately for the board is you know are are there more um, um, is is ultimately this addressing this issue of perceived equity shifts in the stock abundance um, going to be better handled at the board level through some sort of uh, you know qualitative approach what what's the sense among the states of equity comparability of minimum sizes, which is what we've been mostly talking about. Um, pretty clearly, the work that was described at the Management and Science Committee uh, today um, uh, or yesterday um, suggests that larger fish are indeed more common to the north, so there's a logic to larger minimum sizes occurring in the, you know, in a south to north uh, orientation. And whether we're ultimately going to resolve this through a technical approach or whether we're going to manage it in a more ad hoc fashion here uh, and get a comfort level. So I think that's that's still remaining. And I think at some point the board could really use um, 
uh, a summary of the report that the Management Science Committee talked about, the, the documentation of, of these shifts, how they're occurring over time and space, and, and what the drivers are. Uh, in a nutshell, it doesn't seem to be as much um, about climate change that we've talked about a lot. It has to do with the primarily the expansion of the, the numbers in the stock and then secondarily the size composition. So and how do we deal with that moving off into the future? Um, all while making decisions based on MRIP estimates that are themselves a bit of a, a moving target and a challenge. Um, so I think Tony may still have things to add. But. Okay. Yeah, David has uh, given the board a preview, I think, of what the uh, Management and Science Committee has discussed, presentations that were provided to the Management and Science Committee yesterday. So uh, I also heard some of that discussion, and it was uh, very interesting. So David, I assume that, uh, that the board will receive further guidance from the working group that continues to exist. Uh, I'll turn to Tony then for, uh, for an update, since Tony, I guess, is the principal staff person for this initiative. Thank you, Tony, would you, if you would. Thank you, David. Um, the, on the working group call, we talked about some short-term and long-term solutions to moving forward with summer fund or recreational management. Um, and the working group asked me to present those um, short-term considerations that the board could evaluate for a possible initiation of an addendum for the 2014 fishery and future years if wanted, as well as just to update the board on some of the long-term considerations that they have begun to discuss. Um, so there's a couple here. Um, the first one is the retention rates, um, and that is um, allowing all of the um, recreational fishermen on the coast to have an equal opportunity to harvest a fish, and that is what Jason had gone through at the August um, board meeting. We are still waiting on some B2 data, which I believe we have now, um, and we can have the TC finish up that anali an, um, analysis and um, report back to the board um, whether or not that's something that they think is a feasible option to move forward with. We also have a recreational matrix that the full TC has not reviewed, but it's um, an objective tool that was developed to rank the summer flounder fisheries for each of the states relative to one another. Um, it basically generates a number of fishery statistics based on MRIP catch and effort data, and it attaches a score to each of those statistics. Um, and then the states can be ranked for each year according to those statistics. And um, you can determine which state's fishery is having um, a lesser or better fishery experience. And then we can um, set measures based on those scores. Again, it's something that we need to work with a little bit further. But it is um, an approach that has been put out by the working group. Next is um, regions. So I've just pulled together. Um, five different options for um, regions that we could use. Um, the addendum would put forward these regions as mandatory regions because, as everyone knows, we do have the op option for voluntary regions already in the management plan. Just to review the regions that we threw together, um, was Mass to Virginia is one with almost 95% of the quota in, in North Carolina with about 5% a region of Mass to New Jersey at almost 68 percent, and uh, the Delaware to North Carolina with at 28 percent. The next region is Mass to New York at 32 percent, New York, New Jersey to Maryland at 45, and Virginia and North Carolina at 22 percent. The next region is, set of regions is Mass to New Jersey at 68%, uh, and then Delaware to Virginia at 22.8%, and North Carolina alone at about 5%. And then the last set would be Mass and Rhode Island at 11% of the quota, and then Connecticut through New Jersey at 63%. 
and then Delaware to Maryland, I mean, I'm sorry, Delaware to Virginia at 19% and North Carolina alone at 5.6%. These are just some options. If the board wanted us to explore others, we can do that. And these percent shares are based on the 1998 landing. Um, no, the question so, was, so, would these regions so all sure have the same regulations? And that is something that we would need direction from the board, whether or not um, they would have to be exact size bag season. Um, a traditional region would be that way, um, or whether or not we would follow some sort of scuff or black sea bass example where you would allow the states to vary within within that region, um, it makes the uncertainty of achieving the harvest estimate larger when we do that, as the TC has reported to the board before, but it's up to the, um, the amount of risk that the board wants to take is completely up to, to you all. Um, next is um, some other short-term considerations is we could um, do what we did last year, which I'm calling the 2013 fish sharing method we went ahead and set state-by-state state measures. Um, we allowed um, the states uh, that did not use all of their liberalizations, all the fish associated with that liberalization, to share their leftover fish with other states. This year we gave the additional fish to New York and New Jersey to alleviate some of the reduction that um, New Jersey needed to take, and it allowed New York to have a slightly smaller size limit. Um, we have another option that is a version of that fish sharing method. I'm calling it the required fish distribution. Um, it is similar, except for the fact that instead of allowing a state to utilize, um, or instead of allowing states to liberalize, we would first um, Actually, we wouldn't allow anybody to liberalize, and any state that had to take a reduction could use any underage um, that a state had and use it to buffer their um, reduction that was needed um, so that no one would need to take reductions if those fish were available. You could also flip that. And if there were overages that needed to occur, we would be sharing those overages. And I hope I'm describing that right. I'm looking to Adam because he helped me craft this one. <laughs> but, um, and then lastly is uh, looking at averaging the harvest estimates over anywhere from a two to five year period to determine fishery performance. So instead of having a single-based harvest estimate, it could be averaged over the years to determine what the reduction would need to be in um, the next year. And then for um, long-term considerations, um, we are discussing using the modeling work that Jay went over. Um, there's both projects. If John Ward's project can get done in time, we can consider using it for this year. I just don't know what the time frame will be for him to get his work done. I know that the council would like him to get it done prior to, so we can use it for this year. Um, it just depends on how things go. Um, as Jay said, the work that um, Ma Mike Wilberg has done cannot be used for this year because he cannot start working until January. And we are still talking with him to see how much additional funding he would need to do the additional work that the TC wanted to see. But we do think that that is something that can help us um, regionally define allocations. So I think it is promising work. There's also the report from the Management Science Committee, as Dave um, uh, suggested earlier, um, that I think we can use as well as potential long-term solutions. And the Mid-Atlantic Council is also putting on a workshop um, that we may be able to get some information off of that as well as any other ideas that come from the working group um, for the long-term considerations. Uh, so if the board is interested in using any of these short-term considerations, 
then we would need to initiate an addendum, um, preferably um, at this meeting, so that we can bring forward an addendum at the joint meeting that we have with the Mid-Atlantic Council in December, so that um, we can still stay within the time frame to get measures set and put in place on a timely fashion for 2014. Uh, thank, thank you, Tony. You've outlined short-term and long-term con uh, issues, concerns, possibilities that the working group is offering up. Uh, is that written down anywhere? Do we have that as a hard copy, or, or is this the first time? It's the first time I've seen this, which is why I'm caught off guard. Our last working group call wasn't that long ago, and we were waiting on some of the TC work, so I do not have it written in a report, but I will get one to the board as soon as possible. All right, thank, thank you very much. Uh, with, with that said, uh, I think we have a good segue into the next agenda item that relates specifically to the fluke recreational fishery, uh, issues related to equity, sharing, uh, a nice follow-up, or as I say, a nice segue to what, um, what Tony just presented, short and long-term considerations. And that would be a discussion of a letter from Kathleen Moser, Assistant Commissioner for New York uh, DEC. Uh, let me highlight a couple of points here before I turn to Jim. Now, the board has received this letter from Ms. Moser, and I assume that everyone has, a, has had a chance to read it and her list of concerns and uh, plan of work she offers up to us uh, to deal with management strategies for New York's uh, fluke recreational fishery. Uh, she indicated the ASMFC state-by-state -state allocations for the summer flounder recreational fishery are based on obsolete nearly 10-year-old survey data. She highlights the shift in the center of fluke abundance and she concludes the New York commercial allocation also is flawed. So it's a letter that has been submitted to us uh, many good points are, are made uh, by her in that letter. So I turn to you, Jim, and I ask you, for the benefit of the board, would you would care to expound upon that letter and then perhaps offer up some suggestion as to how this board might proceed uh, to uh, respond to New York's concerns? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, the letter was sent, and, and I think it indicates it was submitted to the joint meeting a few weeks ago uh, in Philadelphia. And, and I guess to summarize it a little bit, or even to add to it, um, and I think you know many of you have been around the table you know, even longer than I have, much longer than I have. Um, but in terms of my tenure, when we started this approach of state-by-state uh, -state conservation equivalency back in the early 2000s, uh, we thought it would be something we'd try and see, and, and, and maybe it would work, maybe it wouldn't. And I think back then we even said that you know we can always do something different, and we've sort of been locked into that. It was really the problem. So. Since I've been around, which is since 2007, we've been you know, consistently opposed to the state-by-state -state conservation equivalency because it really didn't make sense to us in terms of equitably managing the fishery. Um, the, um, and we even put motions up on many of those meetings. Uh, Pat was here also. Uh, trying to go back to coastwide measures to set a new baseline to see if that was a way to get at this to essentially update the information. but. Um, we never had success in that. Um, even at those times when my first couple of meetings in 2007 and 8, I know the uh, PC and even the monitoring committee of the council, you know, both were recommending that maybe we go back to coastwide measures because we needed to have a new data set. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't get there, and I think part of the reason was we were under a rebuild, and a lot of states had issues, and we're having difficulties also. So we, we, we didn't get to that point. So we at least finally got to the point was where we, we – thought, well, maybe once we get the fishery rebuilt, then we could return back to some, you know, normalcy in terms of what we had before we, we, we got into this pickle with the size of the stock. Um, I guess the frustration level really got a lot higher because then in 2012 when we suddenly uh, declared that, that the fishery had been rebuilt and then we suddenly get into the next couple of seasons and we're still having the same problem. We have disparate regulations. We have a credibility problem. I mean, we, we hear it all the time. It's like, how can you have neighboring states having such different limits on your on your on your fisheries uh, when you're fishing on the same body of fish? So it was, you know, not only that New York was thinking it was a problem, it just the whole commission I think was getting a 
bit of a what are you guys doing, and that seemed to be a common theme that we got from all of our fishermen. Um, so anyway, we really were hoping we could fix the, you know, the, those disparities. Um, so we're coming to this season, and as we got into last year, I think we made a little progress because we at least got into that fish sharing. So we, we finally saw some, there was some cooperation. It seems to be that we, a lot of states want to, you know, get back to something that makes more sense based upon 2013 data and, and maybe get away from what we did, you know, a decade or more ago and get back to some level of equity and productive fisheries for everybody so everybody has that same opportunity. So, so that pretty much outlines what the letter was trying to say is that at this point, we really want to work, you know, cooperatively with everybody to try to come up with a solution to this and, and not to just sit back and say fix this. We were trying to also throw resources at it. So um, we've been participating on the working group. Um, I've got my staff as their priority to, to do as, as, as best they can. In fact, I think one of the new things that was suggested by Tony was put up by one of my staff, which I think has got some merit. Uh, and they're working very diligently and, and, and almost exclusively on this in some cases to, to try to come up with a solution. Also in the letter, we identified that um, we were going to try to bring in some additional help. Um, and since uh, the letter was written, we have actually secured the services of uh, someone familiar to a lot of you folks, um, George LaPointe, who is very well known to this commission. And uh, George is going to help. And, and, and hopefully getting us, uh, you know, a, a solution to this. I think George is in the room, so uh, you can all say hi to him later on. And uh, he's uh, already come up with some uh, some good info and got very back, quickly back into the commission process. And the reason we really thought he'd be great is since he's been around longer than, I think, well, I don't want to say this, George, but probably all of us. Um, all except for Jack, maybe, I think. <laughs> But uh, I thought it'd be a good asset to try to come up with a solution to this. Um, and again, we indicated in the letter that we were hopefully going to try to make motions in, uh, you know, at the December meeting to get at this. But then after the working group meeting last week, and then Tony had just mentioned that um, we we thought maybe a motion at this point to move the process along would be more appropriate. If you recall, last year we had to do a fast track addendum to get this because we were kind of late to the to the dance. But this year uh, we're going to try to you know, move something along. So with that being said, um, right now we only have um, we only have two options as we've been following along. We have um, coastwide measures, which again, we're still, that's still an option here. We're, we're not going away from that. We still may want to discuss coastwide measures if, you know, that may be a solution to this. I'm not sure. Uh, but the only other option we've had was state-by-state -state conservation equivalency. So we're still supporting coastwide measures, but we want to look at other solutions to this. We need alternatives. So therefore, I wanted to move and put a motion up, and Tony's already got it up on the board. So let me read it, and then hopefully he can get a second. We can talk about it more. Move to initiate an addendum to the Summer Flounder Scuff and Black Sea Bass Fisheries Management Plan to consider and develop alternate approaches for management of the summer flounder fishery for the 2014 fishing season. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, we have a motion from uh, Jim Gilmore. Is there a second to the motion? Uh, David Simpson is seconded the motion. All right, uh, discussion on the motion. Uh, Bill. I just wanted to, uh, the, the summer flounder, is that recreational and commercial or just recreational? Jim, would you clarify? These measures right now are just talking about the recreational fishery. We still recognize we have uh, an issue with the commercial fishery, but this discussion was from the working group on the recreational fishery. All right. Who would like to speak in favor of the motion? David. Yeah, I think, I think we need to do this. <clears throat> I like the breadth of it. Um, because I think we uh, we need to explore a few different alternative approaches. Um, I was kind of intrigued by the table you put together, uh, Tony, of the happens to be 98, you know, proposed regions and, and what share goes where. And it occurred to me that you might be able to work off of that and develop a time series of, of uh, gross recreational catch by those regions over time and see how they've shifted. And that may provide a very nice objective basis to incorporate how um, stocks have shifted over time and looking off into the future how they may continue to, to shift over time. So I would suggest that if this motion passes that that be 
one of the approaches considered. Uh, who would like to speak against the motion? Peter. Well, um, I mean, it, it's, it's not very specific. Uh, alternative measures uh, for summer flounder, we're talking about the fish left on the table in, in one form or another, and then this other matrix that's been floating around. So it really doesn't uh, have too many specifics. But on, on a more comprehensive uh, level, uh, from where the Division of Fish and Wildlife is, is looking at this, not just on summer flounder, but on black sea bass, gut, croaker, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have the Management and Science Committee looking at climate change and distribution of resources. And I think what, what the Division of Fish and Wildlife would prefer is that we not run into a quick fix for a recreational fishery in 2014 based on whatever reasons we believe inequities exist poor distribution has changed. But I think you have to do, you would have to uh, take the advice from the Management and Science Committee and then start a scientific comprehensive program to, to reallocate all the resources, not, not just recreational now. I mean, this, if, if the core distribution has moved in a north or northeasterly point of direction, then it's time to uh, look at allocations uh, on all the species. Uh, you can start with summer flounder and black sea bass, I think, they're at the top of the list. But uh, uh, that's our preference for moving forward. I know every year it's exciting at the December joint meeting to come up with a fast track addendum. But um, I think we need to take a, a more comprehensive uh, approach and do it, do it once and do it right. In favor? Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question at this point of the maker of the motion? Jim, um, I, in concept, I, I support what you're trying to do, but my, my question is, is it practical to consider this for the 2014 fishing season? I'm thinking that flounder will show up and enter the fishery in our waters in April, uh, earlier in states to the south of us. Is that realistic for 2014, or are you really talking about the 2015 fishing season? We were, that's actually the reason we put the motion up now, Roy. I think it's possible if we, um, you know, I, I think the, as the um, Jason had gone over through the TC approach, you know, we were looking for a longer-term solution, and I mentioned this at the August meeting. We don't, we're not there yet, so we needed something of a, another fix for this year and hopefully an improvement for New York and other states. Um, so I think it's possible because we have so many different options that we can consider. Um, and we did this last year in a lot shorter period of time, if you recall. I think we initiated the fast track addendum at the February meeting. And then, uh, so I think it can be done. I think Tony wants to add to it. Go ahead. In terms of a time frame, what we would do is staff would bring back an addendum at the joint meeting, and then we would take it out for public comment and bring it back at the commission's February meeting. Um, depending on what options get put into the document, we would request, um, for example, if we put regions into the document, um, we would be giving something similar, the percent share. We wouldn't necessarily have specific um, regulations, just like when we go out with the black sea bass um, addendum in the past where, where we did shares, not actual regulations. States would go back and determine the regulations, but we would be asking the TC to pull together a method to set um, regional measures and whether that's measures that are all the same within the region or if it's an ad hoc approach. Um, I think the TC is getting fairly good at determining um, a methodology to set an ad hoc approach through trial and error that we have come up with through the black sea bass fishery. Jay's slightly nodding his head, um, uh, but so that will be, I think, a slight less of a lift. And I know that John Maniscalco 
New York's TC representative um, does know that I'm going to weigh on him heavily to help with a regional approach if that is one of the ones that is being developed in the addendum. All right, we have a, a motion before us. I'll take a few more questions, a few more uh, comments uh, from the board, then I want to go to the audience for a few uh, for a few remarks, uh, for all the while remembering that uh, we have only an hour and a half devoted to uh, this meeting, and we've already gone through about 45 minutes, I believe. So we have to keep that in mind. I have to keep that in mind. Actually, we have um, a little less than a half hour, half hour left. Okay. So I'll have to keep this sh relatively short. Tom Foley. Yeah, I, I mean, the devil's in the details here, but I also cannot foresee anybody wanting to hook up with New Jersey this year after the current Wave 4 data and looking at what, what, what the possibilities there. So, I mean, I have to look at what's, what you're proposing. I mean, this is pretty vague. I mean, the regions, I mean, you know, I, I'm i not for or against. I'm just trying to figure out what you're actually meaning here. So it's, it's kind of ambiguous, and I don't know what, what to do about voting on it because I don't know, what to, as I said, the details. And I guess I also asked why you want to do it this year since it looks like we're going to be over like crazy, so you want to absorb all our over. <laughs> I mean, so anyway, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, uh, Lewis. Well, I've, I don't typically get too involved in, in the summer fund or recreational stuff, but I, I did, there are some concerns here that I, I think I want to express for the record. And, and first is continuing to try to manage this fishery and many of the other mid-Atlantic fisheries recreationally with a quota, with the MREP uncertainties and the continued uncertainties until we get that figured out. Um, you know, I don't know that you can fix this problem with any kind of certainty. It also sends a very unnerving message that you can habitually go over your quota and then we just reallocate. That that's that's a worry to me. But then there was comments about commercial reallocation. And that's a different animal than the recreational fishery. The, re the state anglers are state anglers. The commercial fishermen are mobile. And so when we start talking, when we get into the commercial allocations, I don't think the, the, the geogra biogeographic shifts in the fishery pertain like they do for the recreational fishery. So I just wanted to make sure. But I'll vote against the motion just because I don't like using the MREP estimates to set quotas. All right, thank you. I'm going to go to the audience now by John Bullard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's, uh, you know this issue came up, uh, and as uh, was mentioned by Jim, at the uh, meeting in Philadelphia, the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, and I addressed it then. I may have mentioned then it was during a shutdown, and I just have to remark that it's very nice to be surrounded by colleagues who were back at work. I won't mention that again. Please don't, it, John. <laughs> it is nice to have them here. Uh, Jim uh, mentioned the the frustration that that uh, New York uh, feels, and and uh, one of the things that I'm sure is born out of that uh, frustration is uh, was another letter that's not before you, but that I've read several times from the governor of New York saying that uh, if this uh, problem isn't solved, there may be a lawsuit, and I get letters like this frequently. And uh, it's not motivational to me because I do get them frequently. And as I said, in in Philadelphia, problems like this are not really solved very well in in courtrooms. Uh, they're much better solved by the people around this table and by the people around uh, the, the Mid Atlantic. This is a tough problem, and it needs to be solved. Issues of fairness and equity from the point of view of New York get seen very differently than from the point of view of North Carolina or, or New Jersey. Uh, but they should be solved by the people around this table, not, not in a court of law. It only goes to court when, when we all fail to, to address it. And this needs to be addressed, needs to be addressed um, soon. And I'm, I'm grateful to New York for pushing us to solve the problem, and that's really what I want to say, is that we do need to address it. Uh, and, and the letter 
before us the, uh, with the October 9th date, uh, I applaud it because it's an offer to help. I certainly applaud uh, bringing in Solomon. I don't mean Solomon. I mean uh, George Lapointe, because if anyone can, uh, maybe it is Solomon, and he's just in disguise here. But uh, I, I, if anyone can tell us how to how to do this, I think it would be uh, George. Uh, I think that uh, the reason that this is important, and the reason I wanted to speak, is that climate change is real. It's not going away. Water temperatures might go up one year and down another, but they're going up. And uh, and all stocks uh, are going to be affected in different ways, but in general, they're on the move north and east and, and to deeper water. Uh, and it might be a case with summer flounder of temperature change or abundance, but in general, uh, this is a problem that's going to affect a lot of stocks. And if we are going to manage stocks, with state allocations, this is a problem we're going to have to deal with. And uh, because summer flounder is one that uh, has been managed well and it's an abundant stock, uh, this is an easier problem to solve than a stock that's in bad condition. So let's figure out how to solve this problem with a stock that's in an abundant condition. This is a good one to look at. This problem is not going away. In Alexandria a year or so ago, we put a patch on it. Uh, that patch isn't going to, going to last. Uh, we need to get an enduring solution, and, and I think uh, this is a way to go about it. And again, I just I want to uh, applaud it. Uh, I think uh, maybe, uh, maybe there is a way to think of this as a win-win situation. Uh, I think it's more likely uh, that as, as stocks move, uh, we're going to look at uh, some stocks seeing uh, percentages increase, other stocks, other states looking at one sp specific fishery and seeing uh, percentages go down while they look at other species and see percentages uh, go up because all stocks move. So you say goodbye to some stocks, you say at the same time you say hello to others. And fishermen uh, are going to have to adapt as, as that happens, as, as stocks move by. Uh, but I think, so my point is I think we need this with summer flounder, but we need this as a management tool with any fishery that we're going to have state allocations. Now, maybe it means w we should get away from state allocations. I'm not sure. Uh, that's really the business of, of this body. I'm just saying as the regional administrator uh, that you're doing a service for all of us as you wrestle with this problem. I, I wish you well. If we can be helpful to you, uh, then let us know how we can be helpful. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, John. I'll take a, one more uh, from the audience. Okay, back to... Bob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I actually do feel like the motion as proposed is intended to be a patch. It only applies to the 2014 fishing season. And is, is it reasonable to assume that the options that are likely to be, come back if this were to be approved would be those that more or less jive with what Tony offered as far as short-term considerations? By that I mean, um, you know, obviously a status quo approach, uh, perhaps the regional approach, uh, and then perhaps a fish sharing approach. Uh, those are the three that jumped out at me. I don't know if we're ready for coastwide uh, management measures yet, but those three seem to me to be the ones that would likely be uh, most likely to be uh, considered, particularly with uh, the fish sharing approach, which is the approach we took last year through an addendum process, as I understand it. And I just don't see how we're going to avoid that process for this year. So whether we limit it to just that or perhaps expand it a bit, I do think that it is intended to be essentially a patch uh, addressing short-term considerations with some of the larger issues to be deferred uh, through a subsequent action, not necessarily this one. So I think I would support it for that reason, although I think it might help to lend some clarity as to what the options are likely to be or should be. Thank you. Adam. Uh, to that point, uh, okay, then Adam, after you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Bob, I, I think the, um, and maybe the focus is a little bit, we, we left it vague because we wanted to give the greatest number of options, but even in the last few days, things have changed. So I, I think 
and if I could rank them maybe in priority and maybe help the TC focus a bit more is a first off regional would be obviously one thing would be pursuing averaging and then the matrix uh, the fish sharing a week ago seemed like a great idea and then the way four data came out and then you know New Jersey got bubonic plague, so I don't know how well that's going to work out. But uh, we'll we'll see what happens when we get the final data. So it, it, that was that was essentially the idea, and if that can uh, hone this in a little bit and specify it more to help out the board, then I, I think um, you know that's that's what we we think we're going to be pursuing is those four ideas. Thank you. Yeah. When Jim had first shared the motion, I was prepared to amend it to include all three species that we're talking about as well as not just for this year, but to move it forward. But then as I gave it more thought and heard more discussion around the table, I realized that what we're really trying to do is find the right way to use the tools we have available. Lewis just made the comment a few minutes ago that he's not comfortable using the MRIP data at all and I would agree with that, but at the time being, we don't have any other choice. Therefore, it's incumbent upon us to find new ways to use the information that we have in front of us. It's not going away. In recent years, this board has done addendums every year for black sea bass to find another way to mitigate the damage that that data, that very poor data, has been doing to fisheries. Last year, we went through with a fast track summer flounder addendum to try to find a better way to make use of the data that we have great concerns about. And what this motion does here is just gives us another year to continue to develop those tools. The summer flounder working group has developed four or five options to go ahead and not move this addendum right now would not give us an opportunity to give the PDT, to give the technical committee time to further develop those options and give them back to us as a board to figure out how to best use them. By initiating an addendum today, it would provide us with information at the December meeting to decide how to best use the information we have in front of us when we've basically been following the process of something else in recent years for most of our fisheries, and I would encourage support of moving this ahead today. Rob. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm a little bit perplexed here because uh, I listened to Jason give his report, and there was ambiguity throughout, even to the point where in talking about uh, John Ward's model, it's still going to try and be worked out. But I, I wasn't sure, really, that how positive that was. So you have a lot of work under development which hasn't been seasoned yet, I see this motion as formalizing what is already in place. However, the 2014 is off-putting to me because, uh, like Roy Miller, come April, uh, the fishery will start in Virginia. I also think that we are looking at half the problem. I think the Mid-Atlantic Council uh, the staff, executive director, and the chairman are looking at the other part of what makes equity so difficult, which is the science. And part of what went on at the Mid-Atlantic Council, if you were there, was the promotion to try and get this level three stock to a level two stock. At the same time, and that would be a big impact, at the same time, it's pretty well established that with the risk policy that the SSC has and the fact that you're 82 percent, the biomass of summer flounder is 82 percent of BMSY, and you would think that that's a scenario where everything was good. Yet if you're following the progression of years, this is the third lowest recreational harvest limit since 2003. Uh, and it's a 39 percent decrease since 2011. There's some real bottlenecks that are going on that have to be faced up to on the, on the science end of it. Um, it's not to say science isn't moving forward on all this, but it can move a little bit more. And I think that despite anything that ends up from a fix like this, it's still going to be back to chasing targets by the state right now 
or eventually going to coastline, however that works out, or going to regions. But some of these problems will remain because we're managing at the high end for summer flounder. Um, 82 percent of BMSY and yet we've got a pretty good reduction. It's not the half million pounds, it's you have to look at the whole time series and uh, the third lowest in 12 years. So thank you. This motion has had uh, fair debate, pro and con, too many hands have been raised. I can't, uh, I can't uh, acknowledge anymore. We're almost out of time. We have more to, come more to cover on the agenda. So I'm going to ask the board now to uh, the caucus, and uh, we will vote uh, vote on this motion. Need the motion read, uh, Joe? It's a move to initiate an addendum to the summer flounder, scup, and black sea bass fisheries management plan to consider and develop alternative approaches for management of the recreational summer flounder fishery for 2014 fishing season. Motion by Mr. Gilmore, second by Mr. Simpson. All right, I assume everyone has had a chance to uh, decide what, uh, what position to take on this motion. So with that said, we're ready to vote, I assume. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. Raise them high. All those in opposition? Okay, are there any no votes? Okay, uh, any abstentions? I have a, okay, so the motion carries five, four, six. Six, six in favor, four against, no no votes, and two abstentions. Okay, so the motion carries. All right, thank you. Uh, I have a suggestion to the board. Uh, in light of the fact that the assistant commissioner, commissioner uh, has uh, written that letter to us, I would suggest to the board that we do the following and see if you agree with me. If not, then perhaps we can go in a different, different way. Uh, I believe we should write a letter to her. The board should write a letter to her. ASMFC should write a letter to her. Bob Beal, of course, would uh, draft that and send it on our behalf, acknowledging the receipt of her letter, agreeing with her understanding of the value of some of Flounder uh, to, New York, to New York, especially the recreational fishery, uh, indicating that we await the results of the steps that New York is taking to improve management and deal with issues of equity and changed fish distribution. Uh, she has indicated that's what she will do. And then uh, I suggest we ask her in this letter to provide the New York proposed changes to the summer flounder plan well before our December meeting so we can be prepared to uh, uh, discuss, consider those suggestions uh, with our close attention. 
Uh, so that would be uh, the letter we could send to her, all the while with an understanding that we have our own work being done through the working group, through the technical committee, to deal with the addendum that uh, we will now uh, have developed for us for our consideration at our board meeting in December. So that's what I suggest. And if there's any objection to that, uh, please uh, so indicate. Uh, Roy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have no objection to what you suggested, but um, I, I would ask for some consideration for jurisdictions such as Delaware that have a five-month regulatory setting process. Um, in actuality, even if something is approved as early as the February meeting, um, it, it would be midsummer before Delaware could implement any new measures. And we all have had the experience of changing regulations once our regulation book is published and distributed uh, as not being the best practice uh, for, in terms of enforcement. So is there some way, Mr. Chairman, to build in some consideration for the realities of the regulation setting process for those states so affected? Uh, the letter, uh, we could do that, certainly. Uh, uh, however, again, it's just a simple letter to recognize the fact that she has sent this to us and that we have now, we are now pursuing a specific course of action and we are now asking her uh, on behalf of New York to follow through with that which she said she would do. It does not in any way diminish the importance, the significance of uh, any change that must be made by different states, the difficulty of doing that uh, for 2014. So, uh, I don't think it needs to be put in there, Roy, but at the same time, it, it stands as a very important consideration. We all understand, and that'll certainly play into whatever we do as a board in, uh, at our next meeting in December, when, when the uh, addendum, I assume, will be before us for our consideration. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I, I know we're under time constraints. I just I wanted to provide just a quick thought um, regarding the, 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 the vote that we made. Um, it wasn't that, and I just wanted to go on the record to say, it's not about the approaches or, in theory, there needs to be some change. We, we need to consider all those things. It was the time frame that we would be under, and also just the vagueness of alternative approaches. Had that said, had this motion been more into the, in, in, in the line of um, continuing the ad hoc fish sharing approach that we used last year into 2014 and further further consideration of alternative approaches for 15, it would have changed, it would have changed our, our position a little more. I just wanted to let everyone know that. Thanks. All right. Thank you. So is there any objection to sending the letter with, uh, in the way I just described? Is that an objection, Pat? No. A point of information. Uh, I thought the letter should indicate that the proposals that New York is presenting should be moved to the working group uh, as opposed to going right into a technical committee some other group. It'll go to both, directly to the working group. My assumption, Pat, is that's well, uh, okay. the path. That, that's the path that we take. This is more of a, just a, the necessity of giving a formal response to her in light of the significance of this issue as expressed by her in that letter. That's all. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, a letter of the sort I've just described will be drafted and then uh, sent to her. Yes, Tony. Um, the, the letter should, it should be a recommendation to the policy board to send the letter. Um, there are several letters that we've done throughout the week, and um, it's one we can add to the policy board's list. That, that's the appropriate process, and we'll follow that. Thank you for that, Tony. All right, the next item on the agenda is the Wave 5, Wave 4 data, if available. Uh, this is uh, an update, frankly, simply an update as to where we stand with the way for harvest estimates and uh, Kirby will, give it, will be giving us a brief presentation to update us to where we stand. Oh, and no action is required on this, no board action. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'll go through this uh, relatively quickly because of time constraints and I, I probably won't be able to answer most of your questions around the MREP estimates as they are currently. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that they, they are, in fact, preliminary, so they have not been finalized. Um, so first, um, with regards to the SCUP uh, MRIB estimate harvest for Wave 4, this is cumulative up through now. Um, the total amount that uh, 
has been estimated for harvest at this point is 3.6 uh, million pounds, which is uh, roughly less than half of the target amount for 2013 recreational harvest uh, limits, uh, which is set at 7.55 million pounds. Uh, moving down to uh, summer flounder, um, with regards to the estimated harvest through wave four, currently it's, uh, in terms of pounds, it's been estimated at uh, 6.9 million pounds, which is uh, roughly 90% of the uh, har uh, har harvest target for uh, 20 or 2013, which is 7.63 million pounds. And then next, uh, um, yeah, yes, uh, question? No, I, I just wanted to make the observation that Connecticut is an example. Um, you know, we're already at twice our annual harvest limit, and most of that came from the six weeks in wave three when, by coincidence or not, uh, the contractor took over the MRIP survey. So to Lewis's point, we just stepped out of the room, we, we have this issue to deal with at the same time that we have changes in stock, composition, movement, allocation. It's dealing with quota-based management with a very rough estimate of what's actually going on. I just want to make that point. That, that point reminds me of, uh, of um, your encounter with, uh, with a uh, interviewer that you expressed to us, described to us at our last board meeting. So thank you for that reminder, David. Go ahead, Kirby. So uh, to move on to the, the last one, uh, black sea bass uh, harvest estimate as of uh, the end of wave four is approximately um, 1.7 uh, million pounds, which is approximately 75% of the rec harvest uh, limit uh, target for 2013. Um, so uh, in the interest of time, while there's, I put up questions, I think we should move on to the next item unless there's any other business. Well, that's an update as to where we stand uh, with uh, the data so far through wave four. Obviously, we'll be, required, we'll be receiving, we hope, uh, the additional wave information when we meet or prior to when we meet uh, in, in December to decide what to do with recreational measures for 2014, or at least to begin our discussions regarding what to do for 2014. Uh, I'll entertain a few questions, uh, if, there, if there are any, or clarifications. Yes, Adam. No, I know that the MSC yesterday was supposed to get some information regarding MRIP. Specifically, when I looked at New Jersey's Wave 4 estimates, the PSEs and the summer flounder were exceptionally high. Was there any comment that came from the MSC yesterday regarding that? I mean, for our Wave 4, which is one of our most sampled waves, for our most prosecuted fishery summer flounder in New Jersey to have a PSE well over 40 was an exceptionally high number for that. I was wondering if you had any feedback to give us that came out of the Emirate presentation this week. I don't believe that, uh, that we do. Uh, we weren't present when that discussion occurred, but Tony apparently has something to add. I do not have any clarity for the PSE, but Gordon will be presenting to the policy board tomorrow, and I think we can ask um, these questions of him, and if he can't answer them, we can ask him to get those um, responses to us. Okay, so we'll, it'll be followed up with, uh, with Gordon Calden. Rob. Yeah, um, I know of at least three states that I've heard where there are situations with MRIP estimates that uh, are maybe worth being looked at by NIMPS. I don't know whether that will be a, a formal approach to ask about that. It certainly affects um, any type of fish sharing unless that's completely off the table as far as the motion that just passed as one of the options or not. I think some of the responses were um, with the high New Jersey wave four that, you know, that might make fish sharing difficult, but there are quite a few states, three that I know of, there might be another one or two that uh, really don't understand the MRIP situation. In Virginia, just very quickly, we had 97,000 fish in March and April. The fishery really doesn't start till about the first week of April. It's limited to the seaside area or the coastal bays. 
and wave three and four, which are the two strong waves of the fishery in Virginia, always um, produce about 65,000 fish. So that leaves a big question about the estimates, um, and I think what David said is true. There's another uh, variable that plays into all this. Thank you. All right, thank you, Rob. All right, let's uh, head to the uh, almost next, well, the next uh, business, uh, next item uh, on the agenda, and we have one final uh, item, which is on the other business that was raised by Bob earlier on, so that's uh, still to be dealt with. A very important uh, possible action by this board is to deal with uh, the approach for 2014 recreational management for black sea bass, and in the description of background, we see that uh, addendum 23 to the FMP allowed for a combination of regional and state-by-state -state measures in 2013, and that expires uh, at the end of this year. The FMP only allows for a single set of coastwide recreational measures unless a new addendum is initiated that allows for conservation equivalency. So the question before the board now is whether or not we would like to initiate an addendum to allow for conservation equivalency in 2013 or the black sea bass recreational fishery or other measures. So that uh, that is the issue before us. All right, uh, discussion. Adam. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we initiate that addendum for 2014. Okay, we have a motion to initiate the addendum for 2014. Uh, do I have a second to the motion? Uh, Rick Bellavance has seconded the motion. All right, I will read the motion. Move to initiate an addendum. That's not it. Wow. Good grief. I thought that's, that's deja vu. Okay. But Tony. Adam, do you, uh, was it the ad hoc region? Is that what you were proposing, or to initiate a like addendum from from last year, just so I know how to craft the description of the addendum? Well, after hearing some of the after comment about the summer flounder addendum, I'm not sure what would garner the most support around the table at this point. Just a simple continuation of the ad hoc measure we've been doing, or something that explores other options. So I think for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to make this motion to go ahead and move forward with the ad hoc measures. If there is support for something larger, I would be open to hearing that and be open to amending that if there was support for something greater than that. In other words, Adam, uh, continue 2013 into 14. Use the same approach. That's the, that's the, the gist of your motion, correct? I, the initiation of the addendum would go ahead and bring forth the measures that we, it wouldn't necessarily use the same percentage reductions, it would initiate the addendum that would give us the opportunity to look at it as we have in previous years. With that said, would you restate your motion so we can get it up on the screen correctly? Move to initiate an addendum using ad hoc measures in the black sea bass fishery. What would you like? Tony? How about the ad hoc approach? That sounds wonderful. <laughs> All right, we've had a fine tuning. Thank you, Tony. All right, the emotion is to, oh, wait, wait a second. All right. And seconded by Mr. Bellavance. I assume that's okay with you, Rick? Okay. All right, move to initiate an addendum using an ad hoc regional approach in the recreational black sea bass fishery. Motion by Mr. Nowalski, seconded by Mr. Bellavance. Discussion on the motion. Uh, who cares to speak in favor of the motion? Rob. Speak in favor of the motion, and then I would ask since there's a constant catch strategy um, why wouldn't 2015 be in here as well just a question uh, 
excuse me, Tony, would you um, say what you're saying on the mic? There's no date, so right now staff would interpret that as um, we can put multiple years in there and then the board can consider it for the number of years that they want. We can do a one-year option, a two-year option, and an option that would just allow that that it would not sunset and the board could could choose one so we, we might be out of this annual approach. So Adam, is that, is that fine with you? Yeah, I would support using the approach moving forward so whatever would give us the flexibility to not necessarily expire this at the end of 2014 and I think the discussion here clarifies that intent. Again, for 2015 we wouldn't necessarily be locked into the specific percentages but would give us the opportunity to continue the ad hoc approach. All right, so the intent uh, should be clear now for the benefit of the board and the record. All right, who uh, opposes the motion? Uh, in favor? Bill? Yes, I think so. I, my question here was also, uh, can we get this in for, we need it for the 2014 year, so can we get this in in time, I, whatever other years we, can we do that? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, need to caucus? I see no scurrying the caucus, therefore I'll assume that everyone, every state has its, uh, has its uh, ducks in a row. All right, all those in favor of the motion, uh, please signify by raising your hand. Uh, those in opposition? Any no votes? Any abstentions? Two abstentions. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. All right. All right. The uh, next uh, item on our agenda is other business, and I will turn to uh, Bob Ballou for that particular agenda item. Bob. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be brief. Um, as everyone is well aware, the black sea bass stock assessments re remain stuck in a tier four status, and that's due to several sources of scientific uncertainty, one of the most significant being the potential of a substock structure leading to potentially incoherent survey results as they relate to age structure. Uh, my concern is that I'm not aware of any research being conducted to address that issue, and so my recommendation is that the board should go on record uh, strongly advocating that the ne necessary research be conducted forthwith. I do have a motion uh, that I provided to staff and I can read it now. Um, I would move to recommend to the policy board that the commission send a letter to the Northeast Science Center. I wasn't sure if that should include the Mid-Atlantic Council as well. That's why it's bracketed with a question mark. I'll continue expressing the Commission's strong concern regarding the perceived lack of progress in addressing a key source of scientific uncertainty pertaining to black sea bass stock status, namely a spatial analysis of stock structure. Uh, thank you, uh, Bob. I would suggest you remove the brackets, my suggestion from the Chair, uh, that it should also go to the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council. Fine. I'm fine with that. Thank you. Okay. Second. All right, that uh, motion by uh, Mr. Ballou and uh, seconded by Bill Adler. Uh, Tony. I just wanted to update the board not to not recommend to send to the policy board, but um, well, I, don't, I don't believe that everybody has been at the Mid-Atlantic Council meeting and we did get an update on where we are in working to move forward with Black Sea Bass and just so everybody is aware the Commission held the data workshop where we identified um, different research that can be done to move us forward in getting to an assessment for black sea bass. The Commission held an aging workshop um, to deal with some of the issues between scales and otoliths and the aging of black sea bass, which was one of those recommendations that came out of the data workshop. And we are working in conjunction with the NRCC, the Mid-Atlantic Council, and the uh, Northeast region to um, develop a roadmap to get us to an assessment. We were supposed to have a conference call um, in October, but it was in the middle of the government shutdown, so that call did not happen. I'm hoping that it'll be rescheduled soon, but um, uh, it has yet to be rescheduled. So I just wanted to let everyone know where we are. 
Hey, Tony, you have an advantage over us because obviously you are on the PDT, on the monitoring committee, so you have a lot of insights into what's going on behind the scenes, so we appreciate that. Are uh, you suggesting, that before I read the motion, and it's owned by the board, that uh, the motion is not needed? Okay. All right. Just want to make sure. All right. I've got to read the motion now. Uh, move to recommend to the policy board that the commission send a letter to the Northeast Fishery Science, the, the Northeast Science Center, or Fishery Science Center, I suppose, uh, if the maker doesn't mind, Northeast uh, Fishery Science Center, and the Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council, expressing the commission's strong concern regarding the perceived lack of progress in addressing a key source of scientific uncertainty pertaining to black sea bass stock status, namely a spatial analysis of stock structure. A motion by Mr. Ballou, seconded by Mr. Adler. So that is the motion before us. Does anyone care to speak to the motion? I see no interest. Therefore, uh, yes, I do see interest. Uh, David. I always look hard to the left now, David, since you're sitting at the table. They, they put me in the appropriate corner. Um, I, I just, just my own edification, black sea bass is a tier four uh, stock. Uh, and uh, if this analysis is done, will it move it to a tier three stock is the question. Uh, I would suggest, from my knowledge of the stock assessment for black sea bass and how the Mid-Atlantic Council addresses it, one of the key sources of uncertainty is stock structure. Currently, there's a belief that there may be two stocks, one north and one south, the Hudson Canyon area, thereabouts. So yes, it is a very important uh, assessment question, along with life history characteristic of black sea bass. So potentially, it would shove, that, uh, shove, the, uh, the, uh, shove it into a new tier. Uh, a better tier in terms of less scientific uncertainty. That would be my my uh, assessment of the situation. Okay. So, uh, all right, with that said, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your hand. Any, op any opposition? Any no votes? I guess we didn't uh, have a. Any abstentions? Uh, two abstentions. Uh, motion carries unanimously. All right. Well, that takes us through our agenda and other business. Uh, I would assume that unless there is any other any other business, and I see two people raising their hand, and it's uh, four ten. So I recognize you at uh, at my peril, I suppose. So be very brief, please. Okay, because the other business needs to be attended to by another important committee. I'll start with you, David. Okay. Um, I'm wondering, since the board has already decided to basically do conservation equivalency, not do coastwide management for summer flounder or black sea bass, not conservation equivalency, have we, in effect, made the decisions that we normally make at the October? at the December joint meeting, and is there still a need to travel down there to do this? And would we not be better off doing a conference call a couple of weeks later than that uh, so that we have a little better estimate of wave five? And that will help us with the development of the addendum. We can do it on a conference call, and then in February, when we have the full year's data, we can make a decision. The chair will discuss that particular concern with staff and uh, then advise uh, advise the board as to the best course of action. Oh, goodness. Tony. I don't think that we voted, per se, to do conservation equivalency. We initiated an addendum that gives us additional tools that can work under conservation equivalency, but under the normal rulemaking, we do those motions jointly with the council to initiate conservation equivalency or coastwide, um, and then we take it and set the state measures if we do conservation equivalency. With black sea bass, it's different in the sense that um, we take that conservation equivalency concept for black sea bass on, on our own. It's not done via the council. The council will continue to set a coastwide measure that would be applied in federal waters. Typically in the past has been consistent with the Delaware South um, regulations. 
We always benefit from knowledgeable staff. Thank you, Tony. Uh, one more. It's Tom. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I was wondering, we didn't have any discussion on the uh, motion you made at the Mid-Atlantic Council and how they ruled it out of order and how we're being stuck with SCUB for three years. Are we going to basically discuss that at some point or at a future meeting? Uh, how do we get out this out of the SCUB stock assessment? I mean, stock setting for three years and stuck with the same quarter going down for three years on a fully recovered stock? I'll have to discuss that with you offline, Tom. I can't remember which one of my motions was ruled out of order. There were a few of them. <laughs> it, it wasn't ruled out of order by you. The council's motion was ruled out of order, and so they wouldn't let us vote on our, our motion. We didn't suspend the rules, so we could vote on that motion. And I was wondering what happened to your motion and the idea of that. All right. Well, we'll discuss that offline. Thanks, Tom. All right. With, uh, with that said, we are 15 minutes over uh, thereabouts, and I will uh, um, adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much.